Happy Halloween! My name is Tina Marie J and this is my channel where we gain healing from spiritual abuse and trauma while discovering the most beautiful version of ourselves. I really wanted to talk about anxiety and depression a little bit more because I feel like that's something a lot of us are going through and that's something I feel is very important that we work on. So I want to share with you a little bit of my story of my anxiety and depression before I joined the ICOC cult. Growing up, I lived in a single parent household. It was just me and my mom. I have no siblings. And I started to feel anxiety probably when I was around in middle school. I was bullied a lot and I felt like I hated school. I just did not like to go at all, especially when I got to seventh and eighth grade, it got a lot worse and I began to notice that I was feeling anxious but I didn't know what to call it. I didn't know what these feelings were. Then when I went into high school, things got a little bit better but then junior year of high school, my entire life changed when September 11 happened. I was picked up from school by my aunt who told me that some hijackers hit the building and they didn't know where my mom was and my entire world stopped in that very moment. Thank God my mom was safe she was just fine. She came home that same day, but she went through a lot. She lost people. She saw a lot of things that I can't even imagine seeing. But because of September 11, I felt like I had no control. I felt a feeling of doom. I was afraid all the time. And my life just kind of went downhill those final two years of high school. I just didn't care very much about anything. I feared for my safety a lot. I did go through a lot of PTSD. My teachers started to notice that I was changing. My grades were changing. They were going down quickly. And so they had a meeting with my mom and suggested that I get counseling and that I get put on anxiety medication. I, of course, did not end up going on anxiety medication. I didn't even end up going to counseling. I really hid a lot of my emotions and masked it from my mom. So I don't think that she really realized too much how serious it was because I kept everything to myself. I didn't speak to not one soul about anything. I wrote everything down in my journals and I wrote a lot of poetry and that was how I kind of helped myself. So I get to my senior year of high school and while everyone else is enrolling for colleges, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I really loved the music, I wanted to be in the music business, but my mom didn't really support that. She felt like I should go to school to be a writer, a writing teacher. But I was like, you know what, I need to take a year off from school right now and just get a job because my mind is just a little too crazy at this moment. My dad ends up getting sick, so I graduate high school, I take a year off. My dad is still sick at this time, I did not see him. I had a close relationship with my dad, but I didn't grow up with him. I didn't see him often. The older I got, the less I got to see him. So I graduate from high school. Um, I take a year off and then I end up meeting my boyfriend, who's now my husband. So we're dating the whole time and I decide to go to school because I said I was going to take only one year and go to school. And then my dad passes away. So now my feeling of an overwhelming sense of a lack of control has hit its peak again. Right when I was starting to get better, I had a new boyfriend, I was happy, I was in a relationship. I felt like I didn't know what to do with my life, I didn't know what to do with myself because I no longer cared. It was the hardest thing I ever had to go through because of the fact that I knew I would never have that real father-daughter relationship that I always wanted. That opportunity was taken from me and I got really mad at God. I remember being so angry at God. I did not go to church. Before that, I used to go to church, the church I grew up in, and I was a part of the teen ministry. It wasn't part of the ICOC, it was a totally different church. But when my father passed away, I got upset at God and I was like, what the hell? Why did you do that? Like, I didn't even get to say goodbye. I never will get to have that opportunity of having a relationship with him. If you're supposed to be God, where the hell are you? My belief in my faith in God really went down. I did believe there was a God, but I didn't believe God cared as much as people make it seem because of the fact that I didn't have my father and I was just like, why would he take him away? I wasn't ready for him to go. 
with my lack of faith in God, my anger, my resentment against Him, and my father passing away, I stopped caring about myself and I get pregnant. I had just turned 20 when my daughter was born. It was with the same guy who, like I said, is now my husband. And we had a very toxic relationship. Three years after my daughter is born, I get pregnant again with my second daughter. And I realize that my life is just going in a spiral and it's out of control and I'm not getting anywhere. I felt like a hamster on a spinning wheel. I was 23 at the time when I had my youngest daughter. Me and my boyfriend were together for five years by this point and we get engaged and six months later we get married. On and off for the five years of my relationship, I did go through a lot of anxiety. I dealt with a lot of low self-esteem. I dealt with a lack of confidence and I still held on to my past, which affected my future. I lost a lot of friends along the way, friends that felt like I wasn't good enough to be their friend because while they were in college taking exams and getting degrees, I was busy getting pregnant. Right after me and my husband get married, we end up being introduced to the ICOC where we were living and we join. My anxiety and my depression is something that stemmed from when I was younger and I never knew what pinpointed it. I always wanted to know what is it that is causing this anxiety? What's causing this depression? It's not just that my father passed away. It's not just that 9-11 happened. This anxiety and depression started from before those things even occurred. So. It wasn't until as an adult, probably about a year ago, that I realized my lack of control in situations brings on my anxiety. My depression comes from my past, the fact that I didn't feel like I ever really had that family unit that I wanted, and I always felt like something was missing, which is why I got pregnant at a young age I considered being 20 and 23 kind of young to get pregnant considering the fact that I didn't really have any financial stability to take care of a child nor was I emotionally and mentally prepared for taking care of another human being. Now I don't know where you are right now in your life. I don't know if you know where your anxiety or your depression stems from. I don't know all of your stories and what you may be going through but I do know that anxiety is very difficult to deal with and depression sucks so bad i know exactly how it feels it feels horrible but anyone can get through it anyone can move on from it and i don't want you to feel like in order to have a happy life you have to be happy every day and never have anxiety or never have depression because that's impossible we're human a lot of us may actually just be prone genetically which i think i'm genetically prone to anxiety because for me it seems like i've been anxious my whole life however that does not mean that you cannot learn to control it and that you can't live a happy life because you can i received a message earlier on one of my videos from one of you saying that it's too late you feel like you're too weak you feel like you just can't do it I had a really hard time sleeping because of that because I feel like I understand how that feeling is. I understand I've, I'm not saying you're suicidal, I really hope you're not, but I have been someone who had suicidal thoughts, who felt like it's too late, I'm too weak, I can't do it. I've hit the lowest of the low. My most recent low point was exactly one month ago, which was such a low point that I want to give up on everything, including these videos, but I didn't. I instead let it build me up and make me even more of a person I am now, grow me so I can help someone else to grow. I have to tell you, you're not weak. My dog is trying to play. The fact that you feel weak is okay to feel that way. But to say that you are and to claim it is not okay. By claiming that you are in fact weak is basically saying that you're gonna throw in the towel because you're never gonna be able to live a happy life. And what you're doing is you're allowing whatever you went through in the past, whatever emotions and feelings you've had to affect your future and that's not fair for you.
I don't want to just make videos for people who were in a cult, people who were in the ICOC, people who come from spiritual trauma. My video started from that. I want to help those who feel exactly how this person who sent me a message saying that they're weak. I want to help those type of people because those are the type of people that can make the biggest changes in the world, that can lead the best, most greatest life and inspire the people who are so down. The only reason I'm able to tell you this is because I've used my weaknesses, I've used my pain, I've used all of that to strengthen me and to grow me and to show me that I can actually do something with my life at a time when I really didn't think I could. I have things in my life going on right now that are good, that I'm loving, that I feel totally blessed to have. And it's not because I went to church and prayed for it, it's because I made it happen. I'm not saying that you can't go to church or you can't pray for things, but all I'm saying is that whatever you go through in your past, you're the one who decides what's going to happen later on. As long as you're still living, you're still breathing, you're still alive, there's no excuse for you to not get up and keep pushing forward with whatever it is in your life that you want to do. So if you just find that thing that you love to do, that thing that inspires you, do those things because those are the things that are going to help you to overcome your depression, are going to help you to overcome your anxiety. So whenever that anxiety does hit, because it will hit, it definitely will hit. Whenever it does, you will have better control over it and knowing that it's just a phase that you have to get through, whether it's for a few minutes, a few seconds, or a few days, and then it'll pass but don't hold on to it. Because by holding on to it, you're not allowing opportunity to grow around you. So don't put so much focus on trying to erase what happened in the past. What happened in the past, you can't erase. You can't change what people did to you. You can't change what people said to you. You can only change the way that you respond to it here on out. You can only change the way that you choose to live your life here on out. Those are the only things that you can change. And I know that every single one of you watching this video, whether this is the first video or the 30th video, it doesn't matter. I know that you can do it. I'm going to have the link down below in the description box for those of you who would like to join the Facebook group. There's three questions. Simple questions is just a way for me to get to know where you are. I also have my email address down below, hbhl at yahoo.com. I appreciate all of you guys. I love you so much. You will be just fine. Take my advice. Just continue to try and to push, even if you're crawling on your hands and knees, whatever you gotta do to get there, just get there and you will be just fine. Don't forget to push the subscribe button. That little bell will notify every time a video comes up. If you like these videos, give me a thumbs up, share and comment, and I will see you guys in the next video. Enjoy your Halloween, stay safe, and if you have kids, sneak that candy because that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing. <laughs>